everybody. How are you out there? God, I've I've missed you and I've missed that song. It feels like it's been a couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm Lee Camp, joined by Eleanor Goldfield. I mean, you could listen to the song anytime. Well, I was gonna get I was gonna get to that, but oh. I thought first you'd say hello. Hello. Uh, if you want to listen to the song every, every every day, I highly recommend you get Eleanor's new vinyl album, which is incredible and awesome, and it's at artkillingapathy.com. You can get that song you just heard on vinyl. But this is Common Censored, the show where we talk censored stories and people-sensible solutions and common ground movements to fight and build. And sometimes other stuff. And I just wanted to start out by saying thank you for listening. Thank you for sticking with us. As you noticed in the new year, uh, there's going to be... A slight uh, bit of scheduling change. I think we'll probably get to maybe two or three of these a month as opposed to four or five. Uh, thank you for continuing to support us. If you are a member at liberapay.com slash common sense, uh, sorry, no. slash Lee Camp, please don't stop because we, you know, have one fewer podcast a month. Uh, we're still working very hard for you and we still put out tons of comment for you, content for you. So I, I hope you'll stick with us as we stick with you. And that being said, let's we got a ton of topics, so I think we should just dive into them. I just wanted to throw out as a as a mention, we're not going to dig into this right now, but uh, Julian Assange's hearing will be tomorrow morning, uh, early in the U.S. We'll probably know by six a.m. whether the court in the U.K. has said he can appeal his uh, the decision against him, which says he should be or could be uh, extradited to the United States for the crime of fucking truth, which you guys know all the details of that. We don't need to get into them again, but that could be decided as early as tomorrow morning. I mean, will be decided tomorrow morning. And, and we're recording this on Sunday, January 23rd, FYI. So that's Monday, yeah. January 24th. Uh, if you want more information on that and everything, I'll have some of that on Redacted Tonight VIP. I'll be interviewing the uh, famed journalist John Pilger, who has been very outspoken on the Assange case and, ha- and the need for Assange to be freed immediately. But yeah, that's uh, fucking disgusting that he's still being tortured in prison. And anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. Yes, uh, and I think it's important to to continue to mention it because uh, with the with the you know twenty four hour or even like twelve hour news cycles that we that we exist in, uh, something like Assange can easily just get lost, and it's so important um, that I we know. that we not lose sight of it. I think that's like half of their game plan is the people that are persecuting him is just like if we drag this out forever not only does he keep getting tortured as it's dragged out but people tend to forget they tend to move on there's not enough news to keep it in the headlines right exactly um but uh in other news uh folks i i didn't actually even realize this but folks who are familiar with the topic might have might have known that uh, starting on January 1st of this year, the USDA passed or, or started new uh, labeling for genetically modified foods. And that sounds really good, right? It does, because there's been a years, many years long fight mm-hmm. to have GMOs labeled, to have some of them banned, to have yeah. them studied more, maybe see the actual impact on the human body or the body of our environment, mm-hmm. if it can be called a body, the environmental body. I uh, think it can. <laughs> and there's been a long fight for that. So, yuppie, we should be jumping in the aisles and celebrating, right? I mean, no, um, <laughs> because yes, there is this there's this schnazzy looking uh, little like green label that will be on some. Who is it? A leaf? <laughs> it's a green leaf. There is a leaf on there. Woo-hoo! So first of all, it makes it look very nice, right? It says bioengineered, and it's got a picture of what looks like a farm with a little sun, and it looks very quaint, Woo-hoo! right? Like oh, bioengineered. You know, like uh, how how cozy and let's all have a picnic in the green, green fields. And uh, so basically this is the new label that's going on uh, on foods that are bioengineered, dot, dot, dot. I love that they realize that people find the term bioengineered more favorable than GMO yeah, or genetically, genetically modified. modified. Whereas engineered sounds like, oh, the very smart people worked on this. Right. Genetically modified sounds like something out of like a Batman story, <laughs> right? Like, like, you know. I'd say more Mothra. I don't. Godzilla. Okay. 
You've heard of that, right? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I've heard of Godzilla, not right. Moth- Mothra. Okay, that was his great nemesis. Oh, yeah. I didn't. I thought his nemesis was tall buildings. <laughs> No, he likes the tall buildings. He climbs, <laughs> I don't think he does. He climbs up them. No, he's swinging at the helicopters that are shooting That's at him. That's King Kong. Oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I guess Godzilla doesn't like tall buildings, does he? <laughs> I don't know that King Kong does either. He's just, you know, making use of his environment. Anyway, that fascinating <laughs> analysis on, no, I think aside. We to, I think we need to stick on this for a while. <laughs> so... First of all, the label looks very cheery, which is also part of the misleading aspect, right? Because when you pick up something and you're in, the, I mean, unless you're really spending a lot of time staring at packaging, you see a, a green circle label and you think, oh, that looks good, right? And it, you don't really take the time to read that it says bioengineered or really even what that means. It reminds me of uh, Johnson Johnson's asbestos baby powder <laughs> where it had a little happy dancing kid and it said asbestos. <laughs> Now with more asbestos. <laughs> Cherry flavored. Um, so the fir- that, that's the first problem. But then you might be thinking, okay, well, cool. So I guess if it doesn't have this bioengineered, lovely circular green label, it doesn't contain any bioengineered ingredients, right? No. So first off, the first loophole here, if one or more of the food ingredients come from a modified plant, but ingredients themselves contain no DNA from that plant, they can carry a quote-unquote derived from bioengineering disclosure. However, that's voluntary. Ah. I love the idea of voluntarily telling people something that we think might decrease the amount of purchasing. How often do you right. think that'll happen? You know, you, 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 we need you to tell people uh, how many heavy metals are in your, uh, your food there, your TV dinners, but it's voluntary, you know, just right. It's like if when you like s- to let, it's like when you tell a, uh, an oil company, well, we are, we're, we want you to let us know about any oil spills, but we're going to let you voluntarily let us know. This actually, there was a policy that was adopted at the beginning of Trump administration where the SEC chairman said that we're going to have investment bankers voluntarily, uh, <laughs> you know, alert us to any wrongdoing. And literally the quote from the SEC chair was, we start with the, uh, you know, assumption that your average investment bank wants to follow the rules and alert us to any wrongdoing totally great assumption because after a cocaine fueled night of partying (laughs) and trading stocks the first thing you do when you come out of uh you know a stripper's asshole is that you you uh, notify the (laughs) sec that uh that you've done wrong which has nothing to do with the stripper's asshole by the way um so okay anyway back to gmos the second loophole here Starches, oils, and sweeteners made from bioengineered plants, but that are so highly processed that no actual bioengineered DNA remains, may not be labeled. Interesting. Especially if they fall under, get this, a 5% threshold for, quote, unintended presence of GMOs. Oh, that's like how Unintended. That's how it's like, as long as your hot dog is less than 3% rat shit, then it's fine. <laughs> Well, you know, it's unintendedly. It was it was it was an accident. We unintend, you know, unintentionally. We accidentally ended up with a, a little bit of tomato that's made out of fish scales uh, in your <laughs> carrots. What? Um, it gives them extra crunch, though, so it's lovely. <laughs> so the uh, the the next loophole. Uh, they th- is that these new rules don't cover products that list meat, poultry, or eggs as their first ingredient or their second ingredient after the- water, stock, or broth. <laughs> the fuck are these rules? So many prepared foods like that you'd find in the freezer aisle, like, you know, chicken burritos, can contain modified ingredients without disclosure because their first ingredient is meat. What? Who, ca- who the fuck came up with these rules? <laughs> they're uh, they're uh, absolutely meaningless. Uh, another loophole is like, uh, for instance, milk from a cow that ate bioengineered uh, feed is not considered a bioengineered food because it's, you know, down the food chain. Of course. Um, so, and then, of course, the kind of the crowning turd on this whole thing is enforcement, right? Which is always the question. Let me guess, uh, $15 fine. 
<laughs> if they're caught <laughs> ignoring the labeling. Um, it's kind of like when when there were you know s- stop work orders for pipelines. Uh, it's and I'm sorry I keep coming back to the. the pipeline and oil companies but that's what i have a lot of experience with um there would be like a stop work order because they didn't have the right permits well but who enforces that and the oil company knows that nobody's gonna fucking enforce it even if there are activists who go out see that people are working and then call an agency to let them know the agency is like whatever that's just you saying that well also the agency is like uh i answer to you know the government officials that oversee our agency and they answer to the oil companies so do you think we're going to really deal with this right so in terms of enforcement uh basically the usda is going to be responding to complaints so there's no in-store spot checks of food products there's no you know third party analysis of food products uh that's standard everything is just based on complaints so you would have to like go out of your way to make a complaint then that gets reviewed and da 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 and then hopefully the usda does something about it but you can't be it, it's 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 not like uh it's definite that anything would even happen based what, on that complaint what if a bunch of like cans of tuna jumped off the shelves and started organizing themselves into an escape uh, from the store, would someone be like, "That does that count as alerting authorities? Or I'm all for it if we can organize something like that. Um, <laughs> but that's basically what it takes to, to address uh, this GMO labeling. So while the headline looks sexy and awesome, GMO labeling, you know, 2022, uh, that – Again, like we always have to look at the at the details and in particular the enforcement of this legislation because I feel like that in so many aspects is really where it all falls apart. You know, we can say that, hey, this, you know, this law for every, everything from voting rights to climate justice uh, to, you know, GMO foods, it, it looks good on paper, but if it's not enforced, who gives a fuck? It doesn't matter. And yet again, we're in a situation where the idea of government might not be that awful. The idea that there should be an agency that looks into what's in our food and keeps it safe sounds like a good thing. But once you have it completely corrupted, once you have it completely owned by big ag, et cetera, uh, then these rules mean less and less. And we're getting to a point where the agencies that decide whether our food is safe are borderline meaningless because they are whatever big ag wants, big ag gets uh, Mm -hmm. because they own our politicians. Uh, the the amount of money in politics has it, it dwarfs even what it was 10 years ago. And so all of this stuff has been hollowed out like Swiss cheese, uh, you know, the safety precautions on our food and the safety precautions throughout our lives. And now that Swiss cheese is GMO. So <laughs> now that Swiss cheese is made with a beaver's anal gland. <laughs> Delish. Uh, speaking of a beaver's anal gland, uh, something about Biden. <laughs> something about Joe Biden. All right. Um, so this is... Uh, uh, I mean, it's like I recently saw a uh, a quote that that said Biden is a better Trump than Trump, which is horrifying to think about. But it's kind of true because the shit that Trump said he was going to do, Biden is just like, you know what? <laughs> Hold my beer. I got it. Um, <laughs> ICE detainments have soared under Biden to over twenty two thousand. That's seven thousand more detainees than under Trump. Despite the fact that during his campaigning, Biden was like, we got to stop the ICE detainments and Trump's, you know, a fascist. Separating families and kids in cages. And even even within like the past few months, you have the squad talking about how, thank goodness, Biden has stopped the separation of families. I know. Um, I mean, back in 2020, Biden promised to end, quote unquote, prolonged detention. Uh, but he's literally allowing people to be caged without even a hearing, um, which, I mean, they shouldn't be caged awaiting a hearing anyway, but, you know, just just the to add insult to injury. People should only be caged if it's going to be televised on prime time. <laughs> I mean, this is America, okay? And, and, and they fight some it's sort America. of uh, hybrid animal. <laughs> a GMO human, animal. Human-animal hybrids. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
You know, oh, there's a lot of great moments in Bush's presidency, but the, the one I think is probably the my, one of my personal favorites that people don't really, it doesn't get in that top 10 very often, <laughs> was during the State of the Union when he said we need to stop human-animal hybrids. <laughs> that was, that made me very happy. <laughs> I'm not joking. Uh, you know, remember when, like, Bush was the really shitty, dumb <laughs> president? And now he's considered, like, a liberal. I know. Now, like, b- people are, are, are buying his paintings and, and they're, inviting they're like him to... Bo- they're, like, bombing people under false pretenses? Ah, we, they all do that. That's, that's just a Tuesday. That's nothing. That's just a Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday, <laughs> Sunday, Monday. Um, so, yeah, under, under uh, Biden in 2021, U.S. deportations of migrant children, children, increased by 30%. 78% of these minors were not accompanied by adults and all were Central American. This is reporting uh, coming from Benjamin Norton, who's a, a fantastic investigative journalist. Uh, this is, and of course, this is something that corporate media has totally ignored. Even, you know, the likes of Fox News, who would love to throw Biden under the bus. Oh my God, the Fox, Fox News it will tell you Biden is the most progressive left-wing socialist you've ever heard of he has an open border policy they have <laughs> tulsi gabbard doing interviews every hour on the hour on the hour talking about how uh biden and harris ha- have, have led just an egregious open door policy that allows all immigrants into our country which is hilarious i uh yeah big that's... tulsi gabbard fan yeah, the, the Tulsi Gabbard, uh, you, you know, 180 has been fascinating to watch. <laughs> like a very, a very slow motion, uh, you know, train wreck. Um, incidentally, 2021 saw the most U.S. deportations of children in five years, including all of the time of the Trump administration, which means that the last time that there were this many was under Obama, which yeah. I find fascinating. Um because, of course, the way that this is portrayed, and not just by Fox News, obviously, but like by, you know, more importantly, the liberal media is that Biden really believes in standing up for migrants, really believes in standing up for human rights, just like Obama, who, lest we forget, was nicknamed deporter in chief, rightfully so. And Biden's like, again, hold my beer. I am going to one up you. And he's doing a crackerjack job of doing that. One-upping not only Obama, but Trump, who, as everyone, uh, you know, left of the Republican Party, uh, thought was really, I mean, even in the Republican Party, thought was a, a horrifying president and really went too far on so many issues, including migration. And here we are. Biden one-upping him. And as I said in uh, in Redacted Tonight this past week, Biden has done nothing on, and you could just fill in the blanks, mm-hmm. endless surveillance, uh, returning net neutrality, climate change, minimum wage, uh, getting rid of student loan debt, dealing with immigrants, although he's made it worse, uh, you know, stopping big oil, ending the endless wars and the endless economic wars that are destroying lives, including lives in Afghanistan, stand uh you know you could just go down this list and it's fucking horrific decreasing the prison state the largest prison state in the world that he's largely responsible for creating like all of these things have all just gotten worse under him and we're supposed to believe he's the progressive of the two of the two meaningless choices uh steven semler who we we include his work uh speaking security on radindmedia.com uh recently put up a post that shows that the u.s spends 800 million dollars almost 800 million dollars a day on police in prisons uh not police in prisons police and prisons police in prison would be nice <laughs> that that's far more I mean, rare that'd be a good use of the buildings um but uh but yeah that 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 number has not decreased under biden $800 million a day. And again, this is not just in the midst of a pandemic, but I mean, that's worth noting. But this is just in the midst of the, you know, the 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 oppressive realities of day-to-day life under late-stage capitalism in the U.S., pandemic or not. $800 million a day on police and prisons. Um, and again, not something that is decreasing under the Biden administration. 
So, uh, moving on. Yes, indeed. Well, this is something you have already covered on uh, on Redacted tonight, so I feel like I'd just like to let people know that well, it's I think a we topic. Can, we could spend a second on it. I, you know, I I did do a, a segment on Redacted tonight on this, but it is important. And also, I want to after you introduce it, I want to clarify the you know the uh, what do they call them the the, the the articles that have come out being like uh, you know fake news alert or whatever. Go ahead. Well, go ahead. Oh, well, uh, it's your topic. Yeah. All right. So, so the Biden administration, HHS, the, uh, the health and human services, they're the ones that, uh, hospitals have, are, are told to report, uh, certain medical inf- medical data to, uh, that includes number of people who die a day in America from COVID-19 number of open uh, hospital bed, available hospital beds, number of ventilators being used. All that's reported to HHS. So HHS uh, just last week announced that hospitals no longer had to report that information to them. Also, no longer had to report staffing shortages. And so everybody, there, there was a bit of a viral moment where people were tweeting out, oh, we're not going to know COVID death counts anymore. And everybody was like, this is Biden's way of dealing with the fact that we're nearing a million Americans dead from COVID. Uh, basically, one out of every 260 adults, I believe, in America. And, and so their way of dealing with it, Biden's way of dealing with this, the Biden administration, is to say, uh, we're just going to stop counting. Now, then you have, if you were to Google this right now, you'd get the fact checker alerts from Yahoo News, which is basically a a, a member of the national security state. And uh, you get Yahoo News, you get some other news services that say it's fake news that we're not going to hear COVID-19 death counts. And they say the number that various COVID-19 death counts, the the data that, that they're using for their number is not coming from HHS. You know, like the New York Times death count, which is one of the big ones that people look to, doesn't come from HHS. And that may be true. However, here's the thing. One is, even if that is true, why the fuck does HHS not want this data mm-hmm. anymore? So that's question one. But more importantly, the fact that the government agency responsible for keeping tabs on this is no longer asking for these numbers... Right gives these hospitals cover to stop reporting them, at least a percentage. So let's say 10% of the hospitals stop reporting entirely because HHS no longer tells them to. Well, that greatly decreased the amount of data that the New York Times is going to be able to get because those hospitals are not going to report it at all. So the idea that this doesn't impact what we learn about what's happening with COVID at all is bullshit. Yeah. And, you know, these news agencies know that they're full of shit with their quote unquote fact check alerts, but their job is to protect the Biden administration. So. Right. And again, I think it's that like that aspect of nuance. It's like, well, that that one aspect can be true. But then also it's a question as to why HHS wouldn't require that information to be reported. Like there's mm-hmm. there's more than just that little snippet that corporate media throws at you, which is of course, you know, why media literacy is so important, uh, which is something that, uh, is, is, uh, is definitely not highlighted enough. Um, me doing a shameless plug for the media freedom foundation of which, uh, I'm a board member. Uh, mm-hmm. they put out the, uh, um, the project censored book, which the latest, uh, episode, I almost said the latest edition has come out. So please check that out over at project something or I think, I think org okay but if, if it not just look up project censored okay you'll find it also um i'm likely going to cover some project censored uh, articles in the upcoming redacted tonight so. yeah they do amazing work y'all please uh do check them out uh we also share their podcast on radindemedia.com so you can uh you can find more Find more of that there as well. It's a weekly show that uh, Mickey Huff hosts. Anywho. Can I just say one more thing about these, yes. uh, the death data counts? This is standard operating procedure for our government. Is We don't really like that people are talking about A, B, or C. And so the answer is not to fix the problem. You know, say, create a better situation in this country in regards to this pandemic. The answer is largely, well, for one thing, they're mailing out masks is the big change. And they're uh, they're basically like, let's stop counting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's similar to Trump decreased poverty. Did you know that, folks? Trump 
actually decreased poverty in this country. How did he do it? Changed how we measure poverty in this country. Yeah. That's it. And it's done with both Democrats and Republicans. It's the, the, this fucking bullshit of like, we can act like we've done something just by changing the way people count it. Yep. Change the definition of the word. It's a totally different word, right? Yeah. Um, I like how they, st- I think it was under Bush, they changed the wording of hungry. So like this many people in America are hungry and this many people in Palestine are going hungry. They changed it to have food insecurity. Oh, yeah. Sounds better, doesn't it? George Carlin has a bit about like bullshit words. Yeah. Uh, like senior citizen. <laughs> um, Old fuck is the yeah. original. And then it got changed. <laughs> Make shit sound uh, a lot, a lot nicer and smoother, and um, so there's no way to make this sound nice. Uh, Texas, I mean, yes, al- also Texas and other in and, and, and a host of other issues, but in terms of earthquakes, now that might sound like two things that don't really go well together: Texas and earthquakes. And you'd be correct if we're talking about before 2008. Yeah. Before 2008. Texas experienced roughly one or two perceptible earthquakes a year. Texas now sees hundreds of yearly earthquakes, at least of a magnitude 2.5, which is roughly the minimum that humans can feel, and thousands of smaller ones. And this is due to the obesity epidemic? (laughs) No. Oh. No. Damn it. Uh, Lee, that was fat phobic. I don't <laughs> think so. It was he was fat uh, excited. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, in fact, the real cause is oil and gas. Yeah. Um, something in particular called wastewater injection, which is as grotesque as it sounds. Basically, what happens is uh, with with fracking, uh, which is the really what this. Uh, means in terms of oil and gas business uh they inject they literally shove pipes into the ground and fracture that's why it's called fracking they fracture the earth beneath in order to get at the oil and gas reserves that are kind of peppered throughout so who would have thought this would have ramifications i know (laughs) It, it sounds all fine right right so basically they're saying seismologists are saying that this is quote unquote waking up ancient fault lines oh, Jesus. Uh, that are turning a historically oh, stable... Oh, can we please have like an ancient genie come out and just like like so, like a mummy ghost to just come and fuck with us? Actually, you know, there was... Didn't we... We watched like a horror film about fracking. Uh, oh, that right. It was like somewhat... It, but it wasn't based on a mummy ghost. It was, no, it, it was, was like this weird... I'm Well, I'm kind of upset because they, 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 they stole kind of idea. stole my horror movie idea, <laughs> which is... There's this great... Uh, Unearthed is what it's called. I, I suppose not great for the ants and the other insects, but there's this awesome fungus that takes over the brain of insects and then slowly drives them crazy so they're like dancing around all in ways that ants never would. And the other ants will like drag them away from the group like, oh, this guy's fucking lost it. And they like pull him away. And then they die. And then a fungus, a beautiful fungal bloom grows out of their head. Like... And- like- pierces out of their skull. Pierces out of the top of their skull and yeah. like grows into like a gorgeous flower. And it's yeah. like both it's beautifully ma- grotesque. It's, it's <laughs> ma- majestic and horrific at the same time. Yeah. And I was like, that would be the best horror movie ever is like that happening to humans where your friend starts acting kind of weird. And then one day you walk in and he's like in the corner of the room dead with a flower, fungal flower growing out of his head. <laughs> it just sounds amazing. So anyway, they kind of a little bit stole that. They didn't have the fungal flower thing, but they had like Fracking had awakened this, like, you know, ancient fungus that was driving people crazy or something. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> if you yeah, want. I guess we ruined that movie, whatever it was called. We, I, you. The no, movie's called you. Unearthed, and you should watch it I because think, I... I think you, you ruined it, too. No, we it I, no, no. We ruined a lot of things together. <laughs> Don't drag me into your fungus. Um, <laughs> you said that on our first date. <laughs> So basically, 
uh, what's happening, seismologists are saying, is that they're basically waking up these ancient fault lines, turning this historically stable uh, region into a shaky one, which opens the door, of course, to larger and larger earthquakes that Texas or really any state under the current federal administration with this kind of uh, infrastructure is really not prepared to handle. Um, interestingly enough, the state is like... Yeah, like tickling the idea of doing something about it. But as we know, when you go up against oil and gas, like it's not like, hey, here's because some they, logical right. uh, point that we'd like to make. And because should, to do something about it, you'd have to acknowledge it's real. Right. And you'd have to, well, you'd have to say that like, holy shit, oil and gas isn't just wrecking the climate. It's like literally turning our state into a f- giant fault line. I mean, you'd have to admit science is real, <laughs> which, <laughs> which is like a no-go area. Especially in Texas. Um, but this past December, the Texas Railroad Commission, uh, which interestingly enough is the state agency that regulates oil and gas operations. Riddle me this. I don't know why it's the Railroad Commission, but you know, whatever. Um, it has actually nothing to do with railroads anymore, Right. (laughs) but it's still called that. Uh, so they actually suspended wastewater injection at 33 sites, uh, across a specific region where more than half a million people live. But- and this is actually a notable turnaround uh, because the Railroad Commission, as, you know, kind of Lee uh, uh, sort of hinted at, did not until recently acknowledge a link at all between oil and gas operations and earthquakes. There you go. There <laughs> so by is. saying, OK, you're going to have to stop wastewater injection at these 33 sites, they're basically saying, all right, look, things are getting literally fucking shaky here. You got to we got to pull back. And I think also it's important to note that 33 sites might sound like a lot, but in a state the size of Texas, 33 is really quite minuscule. And by the way, folks, if you want to see what fracking does to the planet, Google aerial images of fracking sites. It looks like if you're high enough above it and it's all these different fracking pads all connected together, it looks like a virus on the land. Oh, absolutely. Like it looks like a giant virus has just infected the earth. Yeah, fracking fields are are grotesque, and even when you can't, uh, when you can't see them, like a lot of times, in for instance, like in places like West Virginia, you don't often see. It's just like a little frack pad that they put, but then you'll notice, like leading away an aerial imagery, you'll notice, oh, that that's a different color, green, and that's it. These are all gathering pipelines that have crisscrossed the entire state uh, with basically just fracked gas infrastructure uh, that you know if it leaks, and it always does, uh, causes serious damage to people and, and, and ecosystems. Uh, and so even when it doesn't look that bad, like from the outside, underground, it's, 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 hor- it's horrifying. Um, and something to note about these earthquakes is it's not like they couldn't have seen this coming. We've known right. about the connection between earthquakes and fracking for years. Uh, many of you might remember that uh, up till recently, the Washington Monument had mm-hmm. a ton of scaffolding on it. Like they were basically fixing the entirety of the Washington Monument. This is because it got a massive crack through it from an earthquake, like a 4.0 that hit D.C. And they're almost certain that that one, I mean, earthquakes are not common in D.C. That one came from, guess what? Fracking. Fracking. Which you had a... You had a, a, a we joke about co- that. We fracked our cock off. Yeah. Because the, the Washington <laughs> Monument is the national cock, and yeah. we, we basically fracked our <laughs> cock off. Um, so, yeah. So this is, uh, th- this is something that is, you know, like you said, Lee, not terribly surprising. Um, but it is actually surprising in a good way that this Texas Railroad Commission is at least starting to acknowledge that there's a connection but it is also a case of, like, not too little too late entirely, but kind of, like, we're already seeing thousands, literally thousands of earthquakes a year in a place that should not have earthquakes. <laughs> yeah. And this is only going to accelerate because, again, 33 sites is not enough to really stop the damage. And this can't be repeated enough that oil and gas has to stop now. Mm-hmm. If we want to have any chance of surviving on this fucking planet, it needs to stop now. All of it mm-hmm. immediately. I don't care if they have to shut down all business for fucking two years to while they shift to green energy because the, the shift is 
isn't seamless. And so they're like, hey, the only way to do it is just shut down all business. Fucking do it. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, there will be no future on this planet, you fucking assholes. Not right. talking to listeners, talking to the people. And that this run is this also shit. A, a good point because one of the things that the Texas Railroad Commission pointed out is, oh, you can you can uh, apply for a permit for a shallow injection. That doesn't fix the fucking problem. Even if it doesn't trigger a fault line, you're still injecting wastewater into the ground. Which, hello, groundwater, um, and. Of course, just like the not even just the groundwater, but like everything that grows out of the fucking ground, uh, ecosystems being connected and you know interdependently. Uh, you say so- we should care about the ground. <laughs> I, I was I was unaware that much of uh, existence ma- that ground mattered in any way. Well, so is the Texas Railroad Commission. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, coming up with a workaround that still allows you to in- to frack basically is not going to fix the problem. You might have. Uh, one or two fewer earthquakes, but you're still ruining your fucking home and you're still ruining the ecosystem. And fun note about that wastewater is, uh, one, they don't have to actually explain what's in it. So it obviously has tons of, tons of toxic chemicals, but it's called the Halliburton loophole where they don't have to actually say what's in that water that they're injecting into the ground. Here's the other thing. Billions, I don't have the number in front of me, but billions upon billions of gallons of fresh water is used for fracking. Mm -hmm. And that's hilarious because as there are droughts fucking across a lot of the United States, thanks to climate change, you have like in California, you have billboards and posters saying... You know, don't flush your toilet. Let, right. let it shower with your roommate. Shower with your friend that you met once. Like <laughs> all this shit, and it's meanwhile the amount of water wasted on fracking and big ag just dwarfs, uh, fucking taking a shower. Okay. Right. Well, and it's it's got it's like the plastic straw argument. It's like, oh, we all need to stop using right. plastic straws, and it's like. How about we have to stop uh, drilling for oil, which is, you know, really part of like the, the, the head of the the plastics industry uh, beast. But, you know, whatever. Everyone buy a fucking metal straw. Um, <laughs> so and again, like something that that, uh, that that we should internalize is there are 100 companies that are responsible for 70 percent of the world's emissions. Uh, how many fucking plastic straws would you have to not use in right. order to come close right. to those numbers? Right. Uh, so yeah, so um, it's important, uh, and I think like uh, again, uh, this is there's also there's another important intersection here with regards to the Texas story, and that's infrastructure, right? Texas doesn't have well, again, like I said, there's no state in this country that has the infrastructure to withstand these uh, these these shifts that we are causing. So not only are the are, is fracking causing problems in terms of the ecosystem, but just in terms of infrastructure, there's yeah. not. I mean, buildings are not built to withstand this. If you've, I mean. Uh, Lee just covered uh, the the Bronx fire, uh, which of course is not due to fracking, but it shows like the state of uh, of buildings and the state of homes in this country. Bronx is not alone. Uh, basically, all of the places that I've ever lived in, you know, predominantly in in Los Angeles, uh, I remember asking a, a a manager who was showing me a building once, like, "Oh, is is, is everything up to code?" Because I I'd, I'd gotten a list of questions to ask your landlord. I was like nineteen. Um, and he was like, code, no, do you want, do you want the fucking apartment or not? Because it's like, who the fuck cares? There's so many people desperate you for an apartment a, in LA. You, you read a, a Google article that said like, ask him if it's up right. to code. And he's like, code, are you yeah. serious? I haven't even read the code in 30 years. There, there should be an Sweet ad- cheeks. There like, should have been an ad- addendum to that list of questions. Like only ask if you're able to, um, <laughs> Uh, b- b- if you're able to afford something in Beverly Hills. He takes the cigar out of his <laughs> mouth. What did you just say to me? Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the the idea of buildings being able to withstand these kind of earthquakes, uh, of, uh, of of roads, of, pi- you know, pipelines, you know, to circle back. But Texas is busy putting in mainly infrastructure to handle uh, large-scale UFC events. So... <laughs> That's where I thought you were going to say UFO. That's where that that too. <laughs> that's that's where their money is going. The aliens will save us. Um, I okay. So this next thing, I'm jumping a bit, but I think that this is uh, hilarious. Um, 
It's almost like, I don't even. one of our great teen T states to the other one, Tennessee. Well, no, I'm skipping around. Oh, you're skipping past that. Okay. I'm skipping past. I'm okay. that not that that's not interesting. I'm, I just want to. That's I, fine. I felt we'll, inspired we'll to skip. Okay. We'll fucking yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, I find this funny because the Department of Justice, as it's ironically called, um, is really a domestic terrorism unit. If you think uh. about it. <laughs> And yet, so ironically, they have just recently created a unit focused on domestic terrorism. <laughs> um, and I'm sure, you know, that this is only going to be used against actual domestic terrorists uh, and not against, you know, like leftist organizers or uh, people who are busy growing carrots and talking about food sovereignty and. Uh, and of course, this is cre- this was created under the guise of responding to January 6th. And those of us who are old enough to remember will recall all of the shit that was done after September 11th in response to the terrorist attacks and we have to keep our, uh, right. we have to keep America safe and yeah, here we are without any sort of like civil liberties so, to speak of. Something bad happens and we always get fucked in the aftermath. It's like right. it's like some maniac stabs some guy and they're like, okay, the only way to deal with this is we're going to give everybody anal probes on a weekly basis. <laughs> and then your average American is like, well, we have to do the anal probes or else that stabber will get us. Like, <laughs> what? Right. Um, now you have to get your ass cheeks fondled at the airport for 20 minutes. Um, right. Because someone had a fucking bomb in their underwear. So, so the, I mean, the, the, what's, what's so frustrating about this is that there are so many people that are rightfully pissed off about what happened on January 6th, but don't recognize the ramifications of this kind of legislation. The, first of all, the, the you don't need a separate domestic terrorism unit. The FBI already exists. Yeah. Uh, and and their entire history is just going after uh, activists and, uh, right. I don't know, just people that happen to be black. And, uh, mo- and, and what is it? It's like 95% of all the quote-unquote terrorists that they arrest are somehow connected to either FBI informants or mm-hmm. FBI agents. Like, literally, the FBI creates the terrorism that they then quote-unquote right. stop. So they can run around going, we caught the terrorist. Yeah, you created him. You yeah. said you'd get him the bomb. Like, So if anything, this is just redundant. Uh, and of course, I mean, even it, it's not even like they're not even being covert about it. For instance, uh, Assistant Attorney General Matthew Olson said that there's a growing threat from those who ascribe to extremist anti-government and anti-authority ideologies. Oh, God. Anti-authority. Now, this is this also circles back to, you know, Biden released uh, like basically like, you know, if you see something, say something to report your neighbors if they're uh, if they're anarchists. Right. Uh, that was, I can't remember when that was, but last year at some point. And this is just a, a continuation of that, an amplification. So you have people, and of course this is meant to be vague, right? Uh, this is meant to, to, to be vague enough so that somebody who goes out there and says, defund the police, this is fucked up. Well, that's anti-authority because the police are, are, are authority figures and, and th- now this person is a domestic terrorist. If you doubt anything coming from your ruling elite or the fascist troops that they employ, then uh, you are the problem. You are the problem. I'll tell you what, it would cost a lot less and be a lot, uh, be a lot more efficient if you were just less fascist as a government, but of course... That doesn't really fall in line with the fascist goals of the government. So, you know, um, and incidentally, when when this w- new unit was created, um, Senator Grassley of Iowa showed video footage of the 2020 um, uh, summer uprisings uh, after George Floyd was murdered and called that, you know, said basically this kind of violence is a threat to our country. Not and the thousand sh- people killed by police, but the no. The, the CVS that was burned. And he basically showed that in conjunction with this new domestic terrorism unit, making that link even more, uh, you know, uh, strong and overt in, in the minds and in the eyes of, of, of people in, in, in the country and, of course, the media. And to dig a little deeper on this, 
this is what you see when you end up in late stage capitalism. The people, the average people, the average worker get fucked more and more. Their lives get more and more difficult. Guess what? When that happens, they start demanding more. They start standing up more. Well, how do you deal with a system that is collapsing because the average person fucking can't get by at all? Well, you deal with it with, you know, moving more and more towards fascism. You, Mm -hmm. you deal with it by saying that, uh, your every move needs to be accountable to the police state rather than dealing with it by saying, hey, let's make lives better for your average people. Let's protect the environment and increase the minimum wage and give people health insurance and, well, health coverage and and all, all that stuff that makes life easier and more secure. And guess what? That then stops or decreases uprisings because people are doing better and they don't feel the need to get as angry. Uh, but no, we won't deal with it like that. Instead, we'll just put more cops out there. We'll put a new counterterrorism force you know. Yeah. We'll spend $800 million a day on police and prisons. Right, and I, I can only uh, imagine how much this new domestic terrorism unit is going to cost when in reality... Just $42 in a coupon for Shake and Bake. <laughs> when in reality, y'all could just stop being domestic terrorists uh, at the you know Department of Justice. <laughs> but You again, guys could just stop being assholes. Yeah, that would help. That would just, it would save you money, okay? Be Look, better. I'm just trying to save you some cash. Uh, so last but not least, I did want to talk about this because it, well, kind of flows nicely from that last topic um, and really just shows <laughs> ah, the absurdity, the just, uh, okay, I'll just go ahead and tell you. The Tennessee chapter of Moms for Liberty, don't go to that website because it'll make your, it'll, it'll, it'll give you a, a migraine for two days. Uh, filed a complaint <laughs> with the Tennessee Department of Education saying that assigning a book about Martin Luther King Jr.'s March on Washington violates the state's new law, which bans critical race theory. Oh, my God. Uh, so first of all, that they are banning critical race theory, which is just another way of saying banning teaching that the U.S. is a fucking racist country. Or even just portions of the history of the racism in America. Like, right. I get that you're ne- you're probably never going to get the U.S. school system to just admit America's a racist country, but teaching, hey, there was slavery in the past here. And I don't know if bad. you guys know. <laughs> Not so good. Uh, yeah. So they're now, they've put in a new state law banning teaching of that, and now they're calling assigning a book on MLK's march as violating the law. And not only that, they're saying uh, that it's emotionally traumatic for students to learn about it. (laughs) Uh, Meanwhile, they teach about 9-11, don't they? Well, it, what's what's hilarious is again, like it reminds me of that that quote, like you know, hey, white folks, you think you're tired of hearing about racism? Imagine how tired black folks are of dealing with it. Um, <laughs> you, like it's emotionally traumatic to hear about the need to have a march on Washington to address. Right. And by the way, I think another reason that they don't want to hear about MLK's march is because it wasn't just about racism. It was about racism and the capitalism and how together these create the cornerstones of yeah. this nation and the the cornerstones of oppression that, hey, even white folks suffer under. Oh, that's fucking dangerous information. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just the fact that like, and I think it's so funny too, because these are the, these are the assholes that call leftists snowflakes for, you know, saying we don't want fascists to kill us. Uh, they're saying that it's emotionally traumatic to learn that racism is a thing. Could you imagine? Well, Well, also, could you imagine if they banned all the teaching of history in America that's emotionally traumatic? What would be left? It's just like uh, the day Nancy Reagan wore a pantsuit. <laughs> like, what the fuck would you? And even that's kind of well, dramatic. That's dramatic for what, some. Yeah. <laughs> what What the fuck would be left? I mean, if you really think about the heart of just about all these issues, whether it's the Vietnam War, the Revolutionary War, the plight of the Native Americans in this fucking country, like, what 
history lesson is not emotionally traumatic. Well, of course, that's the thing, right? That you just rewrite history, kind of like you rewrite what poverty means. Uh, you know, the, the way that the way that the the interaction with indigenous peoples is framed in this country is fucking in in the education system is fucking ridiculous. It's like a, the complete opposite. And same thing with with racism. It's talked about something of the past. You know, like oh, it was awkward when we had slavery, but we're okay now. And then they just show a slide of Obama, it and was, then everything's fine. It was yeah, it, it was awkward. It was <laughs> ew, it was tough at the office. A water pitcher <laughs> when we had slavery. Yeah. But yeah, and I think like and again like the you know uh, I I mentioned media literacy earlier, and this really just just goes back to the education system and and how important it is to you know and I and obviously people don't have the capacity to 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 pay for you know uh, well I don't even know that you'd get a better education at a private school uh, or a, a, a less biased one. You um, generally have nicer books, meaning like they're not like <laughs> they're not like eighty years old with dildos drawn all over the pages. But uh, but I mean, people don't have the the capacity to like homeschool their kids and teach them, you know, the the correct uh, the, the correct history here. And that's why it's so important to have al- alternative means, like community uh, spaces where 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 you have, uh, you know, if it's not straight up childcare, where you have like extracurricular spaces where kids can go um, and 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 have these conversations and hear about stories stories that are not shared in their classrooms. And I think that, you know, this is something that's really important to combat uh, the, the the public school system, which just continues to butt scoot towards fascism and completely rewrite, rewrite and whitewash history. Uh, and so I think, you know, it's really important that we, that we, uh, that we highlight that because, you know, otherwise we're just raising a bunch of mini fascists. And that's terrifying. <laughs> and couldn't we tell them that I find teaching fake history emotionally traumatic <laughs> Ooh, touche <laughs> yes i find it traumatic that you've ignored the black experience in right this country. exactly <laughs> i find it traumatic that you talk about indigenous people like a they're not here and that we just got corn from them and that's yeah. the end of the story that's the end of the story well thank you guys for joining us if you feel like you got one dollar just one dollar out of this show please go to liberapay.com slash lee camp l-i-b-e-r-a-p-a-y.com slash lee camp we have no ads on this show it's only supported by you it's just you and nothing else and uh we'd love for you to become a member um if you let's see if you want eleanor's album or the vinyl you can get the digital but i highly recommend the vinyl which is <laughs> incredible and you and actually the vinyl is limited edition and signed so uh go to artkillingapathy.com uh our news site that we created is called radindymedia.com please go to it check it out decide if you like it sign up for the free email rad as in radical indie I-N-D-I-E media.com and is, it, you get new breaking news every day uh, all the time. You really should check it on a daily basis. It's also designed to kind of help it, help us and not just not just um, me and you, Eleanor, but really any of the great leftist journalists out there uh, to not be like erased because right. we're increasingly being erased from social media platforms. The platforms it's- are just de- deleted. Our pages are deleted. It's so, like a home base. Yeah, it's for, like a home base. For so journalists you, and people who want real journalism. If you check it daily, when they delete my YouTube page, which could come any day, you will still get my stuff. So that's the idea behind it. Yes, indeed. And how can people uh, check out Redacted and the, the work that you do? New Redacted tonight so are posted at LeeCamp.com and RadIndieMedia.com. Uh, it's as, it's also at Portable TV, but I think that's harder to find it. So I just say LeeCamp.com and RadIndieMedia.com. All right. Well, folks, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, if you have any suggestions on topics or want to reach out, common censored at ProtonMail.com. Outside of that, everyone stay safe and uh, act out. Keep fighting. <laughs>